Welcome back to the Lions College Football Podcast. I'm Brett Gibbons with thelions.com, and as always, I'm joined by the one and only Kelly Ford. Kelly, we no longer have uh, slates that we're talking about, rather individual games, bowl games, and also this weekend's big, big matchup between Army and Navy. How are you doing? How are you feeling about this game and the postseason in general? I'm doing okay, Brett. It's a sad time of year. I know we love bowl season. I know we love Army-Navy, obviously, but there's only so many games left, and that is always a sad time of year, but it is exciting. It is fun. Uh, these games are always great, and uh, yeah, it's we're talking college football, so I'm still good. Now, ask me again in a month, and it will be a long, uh, long summer, but things are going well, man. I'm excited to talk about this game. I'm excited to get into bowl season and uh, really trying to finish the year strong here from a betting perspective and also just you know touching up the ratings and, and finalizing those because that's what goes in the historical data set, right? So when I make these these proclamations about how a team has performed year in year out these final games they do still matter so uh, I'm excited to see how it all shakes out in the end for the K Ford ratings yeah before we get into it all don't forget to follow the lines on Twitter at the lines us I am at road to CFB and Kelly's work can be found at K Ford ratings we'll be here breaking down the entire college football postseason slate as well as every single bowl game upcoming all 42 including the national championship that we have on tap so Kelly you say we're approaching the end of the college football season but my man we've got a lot to talk about ahead of us here but let's go ahead and start with America's game Army versus Navy Army's a two and a half point favorite against Navy uh, it's got an over under of 27 and a half points no longer will our lowest point totals of all time just be a list of Iowa's latest games this one is jumping in the ring as well it kicks off at its usual 3 p.m. Eastern on CBS and it kicks off at uh, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough I believe this is the first time that Foxborough has hosted the Army Navy game it's usually in Philadelphia sometimes they'll bounce it over to Baltimore during COVID they played it at a uh, West Point but uh, I think I do believe this is a first Navy leads the all-time series 62 to 54 to 7, but these two have split the last four. It's been really exciting to watch uh, if you like this kind of football the past few years. However, Navy won 14 consecutive games from 2002 to 2015 to kind of uh, pad that lead. Army though, lot uh, lot at stake here, more than just the usual vicious rivalry and, and bragging rights and singing second. They are playing for the Commander in Chief's trophy. They did beat Air Force. Navy lost to Air Force, so if Navy wins this game, Air Force retains the trophy and it'll be a shared title amongst them. Uh, Army, though, they have the fewest commander-in-chief uh, trophies among the three. Air Force leads with 21, Navy has 16, and they've shared five of them. This total open at 32.5 points. I, I took a play on that, and it is long, long gone, and it is not coming back. We need to talk about some injuries here, though, specifically for Navy. Their quarterback room is an absolute mess. Ty Lavatai has not played since week eight. Blake Horvath since week six. Xavier Arline returned to week 13, but he got hurt again. So we are down to Braxton Woodson, who would be the fourth quarterback in line here. He was the quarterback for the majority of that final game. Uh, their three-year starting center also has not played since week one. At this point, that's kind of baked into the ratings. We've seen how they've played all year without him, but it's it, you need your starting center when you're playing this kind of football against your rival who also plays this kind of football. Army on the other side, they are missing their deep threat, which is a, a strange sentence to say, but Isaiah Alston, the wide receiver, actually still leads the team in yards despite not playing a snap since week four. Uh, but he is like, 28 29 yards per catch he he absolutely is a game changer don't know if he's going to play here or not probably won't know until pregame warm-ups with these two teams to be honest but both teams do have new offensive coordinators to try and modernize these option schemes because the ncaa they're trying to completely take cut blocks out of the game that's a staple of the option offense i get why i uh, whatever they're they're trying to adapt here so army brought in division two's uh drew thatcher from nebraska kearney and they change the system a lot. They're a lot more spread. It looks more like Jamie Chadwell's option system. Of course, it's not from Jamie Chadwell, but uh, it's still truly the option at the heart, but it's a lot more spread. Navy, they went a different direction. They brought in Kennesaw State's Grant Chestnut, and they're more or less the same looking. I think we expected them to come out and look completely different, and uh, they just haven't. They're still the under center, wing motion. It's it's good stuff, but uh, you know, modernized just a little bit. Uh, that, to me... 
gives the leg up to Army. They uh, This is the first year defending a new scheme after playing 124 games of this, and all of a sudden you got to do something new. I do think that that does favor Army a little bit, but Navy far superior against the run. They're eighth in rushing success rate allowed, which is the more notable metric here than EPA because EPA kind of measures explosiveness. These teams don't run on explosiveness. They run on the, if I get uh, three yards every single down, you cannot stop my team. <laughs> of course, that's we, we know that's how they go. Navy has held more opponents under 100 rushing yards this season than they've allowed over 125 yards. So really, really stout unit there. Army, uh, they're terrible against the run. They're, uh, they're allowing 188 yards on the ground per contest. That's 120th in the nation, and they're 121st in rushing success rate allowed. Brett, I don't even know why Navy bothers with this game. You said they've got a lot of injuries. Their quarterback room's a mess. They're on their second string, third string, fourth string. Well, the committee's told us you don't even have a chance, right? So, Navy, <laughs> what are you even doing in this game? Sorry, I couldn't resist. I had to do it. That's my I was only wondering shot. where you were going with that. I know. I didn't even put it in the notes because I wanted to catch you off guard. I, that was my shot. All right, here we go. Army, Navy, in general, Brett. I believe college football games should be played on campus, right? However, there are three regular season games that I actually prefer to be at a neutral site. That would be Texas, Oklahoma at the Cotton Bowl, Florida, Georgia in Jacksonville, and Army, Navy. And you're right. While you were talking there, I did look it up. I don't believe this game has ever been played in Foxborough or in the state of Massachusetts, uh, for that matter, based on what I was able to find really quickly. So that's fun and exciting. Uh, I do think this game as a neutral site is awesome. Brett, it does, I don't want to get like doomsday or, or, or too down on it. It feels like we're losing traditions like left and right in college football. Not this one. This game will continue to be played on its own weekend, even after Army joins the AAC as a football-only member next year. And I'm excited about that. Now, what happens if these two teams are at the top of the conference and it has conference championship game implications? I, we'll figure that out when we get there, I guess, um, because I don't... I, 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 I don't want to say I don't think that can that, that will happen. Uh, Forever is a long time, and it is possible these two teams could, or at least one of them, could be in a position where they're playing for a conference championship or in that in that role. I don't want to be in that conference office when they have to decide how to deal with that, but I love the fact that they prioritize this game uh, continuing to stand on its own. I think that was really important to Army, if I understand correctly, um, for them to like be contingent upon them joining. They're like, yeah, but keep this game alone. Okay, good. My numbers, Brett, they're aligned with Vegas here. I have Army minus two and a half. It's a 57% win expectancy for the Black Knights. In the preseason, I projected 6.1 regular season wins for Army and 5.9 regular season wins for Navy. Oh, wow. Both these teams enter this game at five and six, so they both need the win here to meet my preseason realistic expectations. Not that they care at all about meeting K Ford's preseason realistic expectations, but to me, it's an interesting thing to be tracking uh, with so much on the line for both these teams here. Unsurprisingly, Brett, my numbers like the defenses in this game. I mean, there's a reason the over under is at 27 and a half. Um, I have the Army defense as the slightly better unit, the best unit in this game, uh, currently ranking a season best, number 53. And the Navy offense, which is the worst unit in this game, ranking number 127 out of 133 offenses, uh, it's the worst opposing offense that this Army defense has faced all year. Bottom line, Brett, my numbers have Army minus two and a half. Playing for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, I do think the Black Knights have just enough uh, in this one to get it done. So I think Army wins it. Uh, I'm right there with the spread, so I really have no no value lean that way. But um, I'm very, very excited for this game, the final regular season game of the 2023 season. So it's interesting that your numbers have uh, Army's defense so high. And it's obviously because it's not just... You don't just measure the run defense, right? You take the all-around performance of it. In this game, I almost don't even look at the passing defenses or passing offenses. really just how the run games stack up against each other. And in my opinion, a bad offense can be fixed by a bad defense. Now, of course, you have Army 53. That is far from bad. That's excellent, I would even say, for these kind of teams. But it, when it comes to the success against the run, I would call that unit uh, bad, in, in my opinion. Um, and, I, and I do believe that bad offense can be fixed by a bad defense much easier than a bad defense can be fixed by a bad offense. If that doesn't make any sense to you, just think about how easy it is to run with nobody in front of you versus trying to make a tackle against somebody who may still not be very good, right? A lot easier to run when nobody's in front of you in that. So, Kelly, when I was doing my research for this game, I fully expected to validate Army being the favorite. Your numbers absolutely did that, and, and maybe even my case did a little bit. But halfway through, I was like, hold on, do, do I have the 
do I have the favorite right? I had actually go back and check to make sure the army was the favorite because to me, the, the it's just not stacking up. Uh, so in my opinion, it's just Navy's run defense has been so good that I genuinely think that the wrong team might be favored here. Now, of course, in power ratings, that is not the case, and that's where we get our numbers from, but I'm surprised the market isn't taking a position. Mm -hmm. And I see this uh, number actually moving to three as we're recording here. Um, I'm absolutely taking the plus three, especially when you're giving me only 27 total points in the game. Uh, that, to me, is a good bet. I... I lean that Navy sink, sink second. The run defense for Army is just concerning to me. If they get stonewalled offensively against a very good defense, we could be looking at a third straight outright upset, even though Navy's offense has been really bad at times. But I'm holding on to that under ticket. That's, of course, I'm not going to tell you to bet under uh, a number that's already under 28. Not doing that. 14 14 already blows that. So this to me is Navy. Uh, if, I, I would take the points if you want to get a little frisky with it. I, I would take them almost to win outright. But don't forget to subscribe to Lines YouTube for college football odds and betting videos for the remainder of our bowl season upcoming. And subscribe to us on your podcasting app of choice via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you name it. Drop us a good review if you liked what you heard here and let me know where you lean on Army, Navy, over, under. Maybe even some bowl season stuff in the comments below if you are watching us on YouTube. Kelly, before we close up shop, please let everybody listening know where they can find your work. Absolutely, Brett. You can find me on X at KFord Ratings, the website KFordRatings.com, and of course, uh, doing the writing over at TheLines.com as well. Well, thank you so much as always for watching. I'm Brett Givens. That's Kelly Ford. We'll see you all next time.